Well, we are wrapping up uh, our, our final series, this final sermon in this series of spiritual warfare. And our prayer is that you've begun to see some breakthrough in your life, uh, in your homes, in your workplace. Uh, and I just want to share a testimony of some breakthrough that we've seen. A lady in our church uh, was watching uh, a sermon online and uh, she responded to the altar call in her apartment. She stood up and she sent me this text. Uh, After your sermon, I stood up in my appointment for the altar call because I was defeated and I wanted Jesus to cast the demon out of me. During the altar call, the Holy Spirit pushed me over and I landed on my back on the ground. I laid there for a while with my eyes flickering and in his presence. Jesus then told me, it is finished. Jesus cast the demon out of me. And then she texted me this, this was five weeks ago. Then she texted me just this week. He has freed me from the alcohol, anxiety, and depression demons that were messing up my life for the past 16 years. I am now at peace, but still ask Jesus to fight them from coming back every morning when I wake up. She is doing great. She's been sober. She's surrounding herself with godly influences. She's on a new path, a new trajectory. And I just celebrate with everyone that's been praying for her. I'm close with her her father. and uh, he said, it's like I've got my daughter back. It's, 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 it's amazing. This is, this is incredible. She was talking with Pastor Jeff a couple weeks ago and said, it's, it was as if I was uh, living under a cloud. I'm starting to see things that I had missed for the longest time. I'm noticing developments that have obviously been there, but it was as if I was in darkness and now I'm in light. And so I'm so thankful for that. Uh, I'm just going to pray and celebrate Jesus, thank you so much for this freedom that Shelly has found. And I pray, God, that she would continue to be held strong in your hands and that you'd continue to allow her to live a life of freedom, being all that you've created her to be. So we celebrate with what you've done and we believe for anyone else who is needing the same deliverance or similar deliverance that you are the God of all power and just with a word, you can do the same for those individuals. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. The title of my message this morning is Believers Breaking Bondage. Believers Breaking Bondage. I thought about uh, abbreviating it and calling it the BBB, but didn't want people to get confused with the Better Business Bureau or if you're a Lamar Ball fan, Big Baller brand or anything like that. Um, A couple people understand that. Believers breaking bondage. And if you don't hear anything else that I say this morning, I want you to hear this. You can be set free by the power of Jesus Christ. You can be set free by the power of Jesus Christ. And uh, if you are struggling with an addiction, you can be set free. If you've got the spirit of unforgiveness, you can be set free of that. If you've got a temper, you can be free. If you struggle with jealousy or insecurities or a spirit of uh, deception or lack of discipline, you can be free in the name of Jesus. And at the end of my sermon, we're going to end in a time of response. And I'm going to invite anyone who feels and has had a revelation that maybe they are in bondage to something in their life and you'd like to be set free to come forward to this altar. Now the altar is a sign of surrender. It's an altar is a, a, a place of where we, we surrender and we die to ourselves, we allow God. Now, um, could God set you free staying in your seat? Absolutely, he's God, he can do whatever he wants. But hear me church, there is something very declarative and informative to the enemy when he sees you get up and say, my trust lies in the, my heavenly father. Okay? So I'm not saying that God can't set you free in your living room or in your pew and stuff, but there is, I believe, something that says, wow, I'm coming forward. This is outward expression of where I put my faith. And it says, enemy, you've got no hold. My trust is in my Father, and I believe um, that I'm going to be set free. And so we're going to end. I'm going to pray a prayer of deliverance. I believe that people are going to be set free. There's some people 
as I was praying over each and every single seat this morning, I believe that there's some people that have been holding on to things that are in dark that are gonna be brought to surface and you're gonna experience freedom like you never, ever have experienced in your life. Turn to your Bibles in Luke chapter 15. I'm gonna preach a portion of scripture um, that often isn't associated with being set free. However, that's exactly what this text is is the theme of the three lost parables, the lost sheep, the lost coin, the lost son, is that God will find and restore what has been lost. And part of God's work of seeking and saving the lost is setting those who are in captivity free and free from bondage and breaking that bondage. So Luke chapter 15, stand where you are. If you're watching online on your home, stand up. All across this room, we're gonna, we're gonna read this word. And as I read, I'm gonna pause and you're gonna fill in the word. Okay, I need some participation this morning. Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the? So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had and set off for a distant country and there squandered all of his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, There was a severe famine in that whole country and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. You may find your seat. So the first step to breaking bondage, to being set free, is to recognize that you need to be set free. You have to realize, you have to have a moment where you come to your senses and realize and recognize that you are in bondage and you need set free. Now, I have three children and I love them very much. However, at times they test my patience very much. I've got a six, a five, and a three-year-old. And my three-year-old is a fiery pistol. Okay, if you don't take authority of the room, she will take authority of the room. And Essie, um, I can anticipate being three years old, you need help with things. So I will say, hey, Essie, can daddy help you with whatever it is? And it's, no, I do not need your help. You know, it's like, are you sure you don't, you don't need my help with that last bite of food on your spoon? Or do you need me to come wipe your bottom? No, I do not need your help. Only to like five seconds later, mommy, daddy, come wipe my bottom. You know, like, that's just the life with toddlers. Now, some of you are just going to have to take my word for this. But there is no helping a child who doesn't want to receive your help. There, there, there's, there's, you can't do it. There's no point in even trying. It's, it's like rooting for the Vikings. There is no winning. There's, there's no point in it. It's not until that kid realizes maybe mom and dad know something that I don't. It's not until they have that realization moment that I need help that you can help them. Now in this parable we see in verse 17, this young man comes to his senses and he has this realization moment. What am I doing? I need help. I'm in bondage. I need to return to my father. Now I understand that this story is a parable um, and that it didn't happen. But if it had, do you think that this son maybe needed deliverance? Maybe he needed deliverance from a mentality of entitlement or a spirit of greed or of lust or selfishness or disrespect or all of the above. See, we often downplay Satan's influence in our life. We say that we have struggles and we say that we have bad habits when in reality, what we have is bondages, right? This is what denial sounds like. Well, if I just lock down my phone just a little bit more, then I won't be tempted to, if I just try a little bit harder, if I just avoid this place, or if I just do this, then I won't. Well, at least I haven't done this. At least it wasn't as bad as so and so. See, some of you are in bondage and you don't even realize it because you see your chains as struggles, 
You are labeling your bondage as a bad habit. Let's call a spade a spade this morning. Some of you need to have a realization moment this morning and realize and call that, wow, this, this struggle really is a bondage. This is more than, than just a bad habit. See, I, I want to present to you an idea from this, this passage that I hadn't really thought about until I heard Robert Morris um, mention it. There's two sons in this story, and I would argue that both of these sons are actually in bondage. Jumping forward after the father takes in the prodigal son, and uh, he throws him a party, he kills the fattened calf and everything. We look in verse 25, and we see the response of the older brother. Follow along with me. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near to the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him, but he answered his father, look, all these years I've been slaving for you and and what? Never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours who has squandered your property with prostitutes comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. So let's dissect this just for a moment if we can. Verse 29, the son says, I've never disobeyed you, father. Okay, if this story had taken place, do you think that that's a lie? Is he Jesus? All right, how many have children? <laughs> right? I never, I, I always obey you, mom. I always obey you. I never disobey, right? Lie, right? Do you think that this son was dealing with a spirit of pride? Maybe a spirit of self-righteousness? Then he says, yet you never gave me a goat so I could go celebrate with my friends. You, you didn't even give me a single goat. That's a lie. Verse 12, when the young son asked for his estate, it says that the father went and distributed it and divided it between them. So in that time period, the older son would have gotten actually two-thirds of the inheritance and the younger son would have gotten one-third of the inheritance. And, and so I can just imagine this father thinking, you're telling me that I, I, I've never given you a goat? I gave you two-thirds of the company. What, what are you talking about? Hear me, church. Even though the older son remained with his father, he too went into bondage. He was in bondage to bitterness, unforgiveness, resentment, envy, hate. He was in just as much bondage as his younger brother, only different. And he didn't even realize it. When we hear the story of the prodigal son in church... There are many of you that say, nope, not me, never done that. Oh, no, I've, I've never gone that direction. I've remained with my heavenly father the entire time. But what you haven't realized is that though you've stayed with the heavenly father, that you might be in bondage. Ask Holy Spirit to reveal to you, is there any area of your life that you are in bondage to. Allow the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of God, to begin to, to reveal the inmost parts of your hearts, your motives, your thoughts, who you are, what makes you you, and allow Him to reveal any area of bondage and know this, you can be set free by Jesus this morning, but you first have to recognize that you need set free. Can we just take just a moment just to close our eyes? Jesus, Right now, I pray that you would begin to reveal to us any area of bondages. Whatever that would be, Lord, I pray that you would begin to speak very specific, uncomfortable things to bring them to light so that they can be released and freed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. The second step to being set free of the believers breaking bondage is to repent to God and to others. We must repent to God and to others. We must recognize and then we repent. So let's take a look at our text, Luke 15, 18. 
The prodigal son said, I will set out and go back to my, come on, 930, father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and he went to his But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. See, the son repents both to God and then he repents to his father. Now, hear me, church. Hear me, listeners online. Some of you may have never been set free because you've only repented to one or the other. How many times have you privately asked God to forgive you of a sin and said, God, forgive me. I'll never do this again. Help me. Help me, Jesus. But you haven't gone to your spouse and asked for forgiveness in that moment. You haven't gone to your son or your daughter or your parent or a a sibling and ask for forgiveness. Or, Or maybe, how many times have you said you're sorry to your spouse? Forgive me, forgive me, forgive me, but you've never gone to God the Father and realized that your sin is first against him and you haven't repented to him. Many of you have never gone to one another like it instructs us in James chapter five where we confess our sins to one another so that we might be healed, really, healed. (laughs) Healed, which is forgiven, whole, made new. When we confess to each other, it brings our sin to the light. And where does Satan like to play? In the darkness, right? There's a difference between just admitting and repentance. The true repentance is much more than just owning up to our mistakes. Oh, my bad. It was me, my bad, right? Repentance in the Greek is the word metanoia. Turn to your neighbor and say meta. Turn to your other neighbor and say noia. It sounds like you're a noia man, right? Okay. Metanoia, it literally means this, to change your mind. Meta, it's where we get metamorphosis from. Noia means mind, that's paranoia. So paranoia, irregular Thinking, irregular mind, irregular thoughts to change your mind. Meta, to change. Noia, mind, to change your mind. That is repentance. Now, I've preached that repentance means to turn from sin, and that is true. But the way that we turn from sin is to have a change of mind. And Paul writes in his letter to the Romans, be transformed by the renewing of your what? Mind. But we can't just change our mind about sin on our own. We need the very word of God to renew our minds. King David wrote, for I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. In that time period, the heart and the head were kind of seen as the same thing. They didn't understand the different organs like we all know now, right? And so he's saying, man, I've got your word in me, in my mind, in my heart, in who I am, that I might not sin against you. The author of Hebrews writes, for the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. Okay, when we begin to dive in the word of God, our mind is changed in three ways. It changes the way that you view sin. You begin to see sin as being distasteful. You begin uh, to... um, see it as repulsive, a desire to live holy. It changes the way that you view yourself, not only just in a sense where it's like, oh my goodness, I am so wretched, I am so sinful. We we start to really see the depravity of humanity, of, of our human nature, but also we start to see ourselves as being forgiven. We start to see ourselves with having a purpose and having power given from God. And the third way our mind changes is it changes the way you believe God sees you. We no longer believe that God just sees us as like this, this parent that's about ready to hand out the discipline. We read this beautiful scripture in the gospel of a loving parent and we start to see God uh, uh, that we are sons and daughters, heirs. We are his beloved children. This might be the most important thing that I say in today's sermon right now. Being rooted in the word of God leads to a life of repentance. Do you hear me? 
being rooted in the word of God leads to a life of repentance because it changes the way you see sin, you see yourself, and you see God. Some of you have never truly repented because you've never truly gotten in the word of God. It's time we get serious about it. It's a time that we metanoia, we change our mind about sin, we repent. And we can't do that just on our own. We need the word of God. We realize, we repent, and the last key to being set free is to receive the gift from the Father. We have to be willing to lay down whatever we're holding at this moment and then we receive. See, salvation is much more than just being saved from our garbage, from our sin. We actually receive things. Let's take a look at our verses in verse 22 through 24. But the father said to his servants, quick, bring the best and put it on him. Put a, on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate for this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. He repents and the father begins to bestow gifts upon him. And these three gifts were very significant and the audience would have known what they represented in that day and age. The first gift that he gives him is the robe and that represents righteousness. It says, I no longer look at your past. I no look at your wild living. I no longer look at your prostituting. You are my son. You are made new. You are forgiven. You are clothed in righteousness. Isaiah 61 10. I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of his righteousness. We sing about it in songs, clothed in his righteousness, right? The robe represents righteousness, and that's a gift from the Father. The second is that he gave him a ring, and the ring represents authority. You think of uh, in Genesis chapter 41, Joseph has been sold into slavery. He works through Potiphar. He's thrown back into jail. He ends up, Joseph, if you don't know the story, being second in control of all of Egypt under only Pharaoh himself. And in Genesis 41, what does Pharaoh give Joseph? What does Pharaoh give Joseph? A ring. Says this ring gives you all authority in all of the land that I oversee. See, in, in Luke 10, 19, Jesus gives us authority, gives his disciples, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions. Now, if you were to read that in context of that chapter, snakes and scorpions represent demonic spirits, if you read this in context. It's, and to overcome all the power of the enemy, and nothing will harm you. So he gives a robe of righteousness, a ring of authority, and last, the shoes, which represent freedom. See, in that time period, slaves didn't wear shoes. So shoes represented a sign of freedom represented that you are, you are a free person. Romans six eighteen, Paul writes, you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. You're no longer in bondage and in chains to the sin. Now you are bought, you are purchased by the blood of the lamb and you become a slave to righteousness, to the good works that God has prepared in advance for you since the beginning of time. We need to recognize, we need to repent, but then we need to receive. Are you willing to receive this morning? Would you put away all your pens, your notes? Would you stand with me this morning? And Ian, worship team, would you come? In just a moment, I'm gonna lead you in a, a prayer. And then I'm gonna take authority that God has given me, given us, in Jesus' name, and I'm gonna pray a prayer of deliverance. And if you need set free, I'm going to invite people to come down to the altar. I said this earlier, this altar is not a place of embarrassment. The altar is a place of empowerment. The altar is a place that just signifies this is where my trust is in. And so I don't, I don't want people to be looking around and worried about what someone is gonna be thinking because if you're worried about what so-and-so is thinking about you, you're more concerned about what man thinks rather than what God wants to do in your life. So would you close your eyes right now? 
Jesus, I pray right now that that we would recognize and realize any sins in our lives. Just begin to ask the Spirit of God right now, is there any sin in my life that might be a bondage? God, would you speak names of people that maybe we need to repent to or sins that we need to repent of? Would you just begin to reveal to us areas of our lives that we are in bondage, whether we realize it or not? Speak to us by your spirit, Lord. All across this room, watching online, would you just put your hands out in front like you're ready to receive? And would you repeat this this prayer after me, saying, Father, I ask that you would forgive me of all of my sin, and I pray that you would set me free from any and all bondages. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I want to pray for you, and if you need to be set free, I want you to move from your seat right now. Come to this altar. Boldly come. Don't wait for a neighbor. If you need set free, come to the altars. I begin to pray. Lord, I take authority in the name of Jesus, and I take authority over every demonic influence, power, or any uh, influence in anybody's life as people come to the altar, Jesus. I pray, God, that they would be set free in the name of Jesus. It's not the authority of my voice, but it's the authority given to me by your name, God. We are covered by the blood of the Lamb. We're held by the word of God. We are made pure and sanctified by your Holy Spirit, and we overcome by the word of your testimony, Jesus. So I pray that this morning that there would be people set free in the name of Jesus, the name above all names, God. So this morning, I take authority of over any spirit of bitterness, unforgiveness, resentment, hate, malice, envy, or jealousy, and I command them to leave in Jesus' name. Over any insecurity, inferiority, rejection, fear, self-hate, self-destruction, self-pity, and I command them to be gone in Jesus' name. I take authority over anger and rage and murder, violence, lawlessness, will they be gone in the name of Jesus. For any sexual immorality, sexual impurity, adultery, lust, fornication, any pornography addiction, all forms of sexual impurity, would they be gone in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, against the spirit of pride, a lying spirit, a Jezebel spirit, rebellious, de- deception, manipulation, control, that they would be gone in the name of Jesus Christ. Any spirit of criticism, judgmentalism, arrogance, prejudice, racism, God, that they would be gone in the name of Jesus. Greed, materialism, selfishness, covetousness, selfish ambition, that they would be gone in the name of Jesus. Anxiety, depression, worry, that they would be gone in the name of Jesus Christ. God, I pray against the spirit of suicide. In the name of Jesus, it would be gone. Any eating disorder, anorexia or bulimia or orthorexia, any eating disorder, that it would be gone in the name of Jesus. Any addiction of alcoholism, gluttony or drugs, Jesus, that it would be gone in your name. Any legalism, religious pride, heresy, false doctrine, gone in the name of Jesus. We pray against the spirit of stealing or slothfulness, laziness, unbelief, God, that it would be gone and set free in the name of Jesus. Any guilt, God, any shame, any embarrassment, any humiliation, that they would be set free in the name of Jesus. Any sickness, disease, infirmities, chronic issues, God, that they would be set free in the name of Jesus, that your people would be set free from these bondages. Any witchcraft, the occult or blasphemy, any work of Satan and his demonic forces, that they would be free and broken in the name of Jesus. Break every curse spoken over your people, over your my brothers and sisters, that they would be set free in the name of Jesus. Break every generational tendency and sin. 
God, in the name of Jesus, any and all demonic presence or strongholds, I command you to leave in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, would you begin to fill? Would you begin to fill every place where every spirit is leaving, God? Empower, encourage, bring freedom, wholeness, and healing in Jesus' name. Thank you, God, for what you are doing right now. I want everybody to listen to me. I've given you three R's. Recognize, repent, and receive. But there's a fourth R. It's to renounce. Renounce the lies of the enemy. Because some of you, I believe, are on a path of freedom. Some of you have been set free in this moment. But this is what Satan likes to do. We take authority over any demonic influence, any, any oppression, any bondages. And this is what Satan likes to do. We say, you be gone in the name of Jesus. And, and he says, nope, not leaving. Nope, nope, I'm not going anywhere. Nope, I'm still, I'm still with you. I'll, I'll be back. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going anywhere. Nope, 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 I'm, I'm still with you. But guess what? They have to go in the name of Jesus because there is no other name like the name of Jesus and there is power there's authority and we have been given that but some of you the freedom has been there and the key is in your hand but you need to repent and there might be some of you that your freedom is right there but you just need to go to that spouse you need to go to a brother or a sister or a parent or a sip whoever it is and you need to say I'm sorry and that is going to be the moment that God completely sets you free of that bondage. We recognize, we repent, we receive, and then we renounce lies. I was praying in my office on Tuesday, and I was just like asking God, why is it that there seems to be people that just struggle so much with bondage and just just oppression and there's other people who just seem like they don't struggle with it nearly much anybody else just like ever have those questions like man you know we, we might say it kind of in this way like wow that person just really has their demons you know well, why is that and I almost broke down crying in my office when he answered that question. He said, Austin, you are very fortunate to have parents that didn't open up doors of opportunity at a young age for the enemy to come in and begin attacking you in the early developmental years of your life, in your teenage years of your life. We, we don't just need a change of mind, but sometimes we need a change of pace. And as we change our minds, we actually change our actions. Parents, I'm never going to tell you what to do. I'm never going to stand up and say, this app is okay and this app's not. I'm never going to say, this TV channel is okay and this TV channel's not. But I will encourage you and, and I ask you, I plead with you and I beg with you because your kid's soul is more important than entertainment that you would pray and prayerfully consider how the Lord would want your household to be ran because there is a, an absolute dark undercurrent in social media and a lot of you guys are in it and you're believers you've been with the Father but you don't even realize that you're being sucked in to something that is keeping you. And maybe your insecurity is tied to your phone. Maybe your whatever is tied to Instagram or Facebook or whatever your social media platform thing is. Maybe the Lord would tell you this morning, your freedom will come as soon as you delete that. As soon as you cancel that network, that cable, that whatever it is. Now, I'm not gonna tell you to do that, but I am gonna ask you, Will you prayerfully consider and be open, like open your eyes to what you are allowing to influence you and your family? So Jesus, right now, we, we just ask that your spirit 
of freedom would continue to dwell in this place, that new hope would be a place where people would experience the love and the power and the grace of our loving Savior, Jesus Christ, that people would walk in with chains and they would walk out free and they would have a word of testimony that overcomes and sends the enemy running and fleeing in the name of Jesus. So I pray, God, that the freedom that has taken place this morning, we receive it, we declare it, we stand on it in the name of Jesus. And I pray, God, that your people would be free. Shine your face upon them as they go their separate ways. And we love you, Lord. Help us love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's great to be with you this morning. Come back to hear Pastor Luke tonight. Thank you for joining us online. We'll see you next week. God bless you.